So we're gonna start by taking a look at Genesis 4. And we're talking about, again, second chance. So this is a, a positive message, but it's gonna help us to also reflect and I'll glad God to purify us and show us some things, amen that we may need to repent for. So in Genesis 4, we find ourselves that the fall of man has already happened, right? Adam and Eve have eaten of the forbidden fruit and they've been cast out of the beautiful garden. Now Adam is gonna have to work the ground in toil. He's gonna have to work before too, but it wasn't gonna be in toil. So now, and also Eve is going to deliver children in childbirth and there's some other things that God shared with them as well. But that's kind of the, the gist of what's happened at this time. So now sin has entered in through the first Adam and that sin is being passed down to the generations. So now we're gonna see Eve and Adam are gonna have some children and we're gonna see what happens to them. Chapter four of Genesis. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Now they have different assignments. There's different assignments in the kingdom, so they had different assignments. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So let's talk through some of this. So when I talk about different assignments, we're talking about Abel being a keeper of a sheep, the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. They both were supposed to bring forth offerings, but we see here that different types of offerings are brought forth. Cain brings his offering on the fruit of the ground, and that's all we hear about that. But Abel, brought the firstborn of his flock. We know that's pleasing to God to bring our first fruits, to bring our first to God. We want to tithe first to give him first because it's all his anyways. So you want to give it to him first and then take the remainder, amen, after we've given to the Lord because it's his. So we want to honor him with the first. And so he gave, he being able, the firstborn of his flock and of their fat, and that was significant. He also gave of the fat as well. He did more than just giving the firstborn, he gave also of the fat, amen? So he was doing a very substantial offering that pleased the Lord, amen? Now Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Now let's take a look at this. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? I wanna stop here. So God is asking, why are you angry? God is inviting him in. He already knew why he was angry. God, when he's dialoguing with us, he's not asking us because he doesn't know the answer. In the same way that he asked Adam, who told you that you were naked? He already knew. Have you eaten it? And then God said, have you eaten of the tree that I told you not to? He already knew. He was talking to them to say, did you do what I did not tell you? Who told you this? Meaning, that's not something that I told you. So where are you getting this? Meaning, you're supposed to be listening to me. So he's engaging to in order for us to get to the right positioning so that we can receive from him. So we can hear clearly. God leads and guides us. Amen. He leads and guides us. And so he's leading Cain to say, why are you angry? Has your countenance fallen? Why are you angry? God it doesn't say that God was angry with him. It said he did not respect his offering. But Cain has an opportunity to do the right thing. But what does he do? Does he repent before God? Now at this time, repentance has not been introduced in a formal way. We know later on in the Old Testament, prophet Isaiah, prophet Jeremiah, and Jonah are going to have, um, rather telling the people to repent, telling the people of Israel in the case of Jeremiah and Isaiah, telling the people to repent. And then Jonah went to the people of Nineveh and said to repent. But here we see that God is engaging Cain. And I believe it was to say, hey, you don't need to be angry. He's going to tell him, just do the right thing. So if you do well, verse 7, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. So he's telling him there's sin there. You, you did not do what was expected of you. So you did not do well. So, so sin is lying at the door. So it's an invitation to say, oh, I sinned. If I do what is right, I will it, be, it, it will be accepted. I will be accepted. Verse seven, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. 
and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. So he was telling Cain, God was telling Cain, you should rule over sin, sin should not rule over you. And I believe God was inviting Cain to, to repent in a way to say, God, I'm sorry for not bringing my best to you in this offering. And then for him to go and do the right thing, turn to God and God graciously helping him do the right thing. But Cain does not turn to God. Instead, he chooses to sin some more. We're gonna see that.